I'm Tanya. I am a hairstylist and a makeup artist and an independent filmmaker from Michigan. And I'm also a vegan. So November of 2017 is my was my two year vegan anniversary. And I decided that in 2018, I'm going to do some more vegan activism in various ways. So one of the ways that I wanted to do that was make videos about my favorite YouTubers and how they've inspired me. So this video tells the story about why I have a James Aspie signature tattoo on my arm. So how did this happen? Um, like I said, I've been vegan for two years. So when I first went vegan, I quickly realized that YouTube was going to be by and far like the biggest and best resource that anybody who has any questions about veganism could use. And so I jumped in with both feet and I quickly found some YouTubers that I really related to and really appreciated. I found James's channel and started following his journey and he really has a pretty crazy story of like how he turned to become not only vegan but a vegan activist and how it's so important to him and such a huge part of his life. And his videos aren't exclusively on veganism but they're also just about like in general like living a happy life and making sure that no aspect of your life is left unfulfilled like relationships are really important and taking care of yourself mind body spirit all of that is like really important he talks about vipassana meditation um he talks about going out with friends you know and just making sure that you take a lot of time to have fun too but his journey is really something. <laughs> when he was like 17 years old, he got diagnosed with cancer. He had a really, really hard time for several years, almost died. He was not expected to live from what he went through. He went in the hospital. He was there for a long time. And that's a really impressionable and difficult age to be in the hospital and to be so sick. And he says that that's when he learned what suffering meant. And so it gave him a different point of view. And he started coming out of himself slowly over the next few years, coming out of his own ways of thinking and his own um, pro started deprogramming himself basically and started seeing that the suffering that he went through uh, he was relating it to animals and uh, what they're going through so he started slowly opening up his eyes during this time but he got addicted to drugs because he couldn't he couldn't drink with his friends so he started smoking pot and uh, when he started finally getting better because he was sick for so so long um, and had gained a ton of weight so he started finally feeling better he lost a lot of weight started working on a cruise ship as a personal trainer. He met an Indian man there um, who told him that eating animals was bad karma. Um, and then he he went vegetarian for a, a while and then he all of a sudden decided vegan was the way. So then he started the thing that probably made him the most famous um, and he started a, pro, um, a project called Voiceless 365 and he, he went an entire year without speaking. And again, that's where so many people know him from. He started a, a blog online and he, like I said, went voiceless for an entire year. And he said it kept getting harder and harder as the time went by. You know, like it didn't get easier to be voiceless, it got harder because during that entire year he started educating himself like heavy duty about what animals go through, um, what the industries are like, and all that kind of stuff. So he started getting this fire in, inside of him even more and couldn't wait to start talking. So he broke his vow of silence on basically the Australian version of like America's Today Show kind of a thing and like millions of people saw him break his silence and it was a really beautiful, I wish I could link it here but I don't know how that works as far as like being able to use that speech or anything but he um, did about two or three minutes of a beautiful a beautiful way to break a year's vow of silence and um, so that went viral and um, as did many other of, of his speeches he's also done a couple other of other like stunts which he doesn't mind the word stunt basically he's trying to get attention for the cause he tattooed himself for 25 hours it was supposed to be 24 hours but then they got a big donation and he's like I'll do it another hour and so he's got ta vegan tattoos all over his body and he also just very recently in Australia was outside of a slaughterhouse and he and I'm not sure how many other people were involved but he went like on a fast for several days so I'd been following his journey like I said and I was a big fan and then I found out that he was coming to Canada um, he would be in London Ontario which is like three hours away from me and then Toronto which is about five or six hours away from me and I sort of looked at my schedule and decided that I could make it and I have I have lovely friends that live in London so 
I drove out, I saw him at VegFest on London on a Saturday afternoon, and then the next day I left my friend's house and drove up near Toronto to, um, and I had VIP or meet and greet passes for him, and it was a really small, like, little intimate gathering. I think there were 50 people at the meet and greet, and then a couple hundred people probably at the other, at the other part of his speech, and, and he was, he was, he was awesome, of course, and, um, everybody was already fans of his and stuff like that, so it was very, like, intimate and, and nice. And so when I, when I walked in there, I started like, you know, getting a little choked up and everything because he just means so much to me. And like, he means so much to, he should mean so much to everybody who's vegan, really, because he, he's the real deal and he really is trying to spread the word and get, you know, dedicate his life to getting the word out there even further. So, you know, love. Um, so I went over to him, I talked to him for a few minutes, and just got choked up and felt silly and everything. And But he was he was lovely, and I got my picture taken with him and everything, and it was great. And I gave him some vegan jerky from the Louisville uh, Vegan Jerky Company. And then I went over and found my seat, and where, um, where I was sitting, there were these two people behind me. So I said to them, you know, like, oh my god, I almost started crying, and they both said, oh my god, us too. And then I started talking to them, Lana and Chris, and they were so cute. And like, um, they had just gotten vegan tattoos, and they were so they were showing me because they had traveled to get to this, um, to get to the speech too, and they showed me their vegan tattoos. So I said, "Oh my God, I'm celebrating two years right now, and I'm going to get a vegan tattoo, and I'm pretty sure it's going to be on this arm and everything, but I'm I'm not sure exactly when I'm getting it or anything." And then I jokingly said to them, I should have James just sign my arm and get that tattooed. I mean, what a better tattoo is there than a James Aspie signature to celebrate your vegan anniversary? And they both looked at me and just went, <laughs> like, and uh, I found out later from Chris that he was, like, really sorry that he didn't do it, too. So, so anyway, I said, oh, my God, should I? Should I have him sign my arm? And they said, yes. And so, um, so I went back to James, and I was like, hey... Uh, I know you're into tattoos and everything, you can appreciate this, but I said, will you sign my arm? And he was like, oh my god, you know, and he was so cute about it because he was just trying to figure out, like, how big I wanted it, and, like, I'm probably going to get some other stuff around here because I have flowers on this arm and stuff, so I'll probably get something else over here eventually, but I want to keep it like this for at least a year. Um, anyway, he was lovely, and he took his time, and he's got a super cool signature, so, um... I had to keep, you know, I had to protect it for the next 24 hours and stuff. But, um, and I'm, I'm really glad that I did that because, um, you know, like I said, he means a lot to me. He means a lot to the vegan movement. He is, uh, becoming synonymous with the vegan movement. And I know that he means a lot to a lot of people. Funny story about when I got my tattoo. When I went in there, the guy at the counter, he was just kind of like, you know, making conversation. And he said, well, well like, whose signature is it? And I said, well, okay, before I said James Aspie, um, I noticed that there was a couple standing at the end of the uh, counter, and they were just standing there, and they were listening to what I was saying, stuff, and I am by no means ashamed of saying that I'm vegan whatsoever, but, you know, like, when you are vegan, you do get accustomed to, like, how do you know somebody's vegan? Don't worry, they'll tell you, and all those, you know, all the, all the lame jokes and stuff, you know, so it was just kind of like, you know, like, I was going to tell him, proudly who it was but I was also sort of thinking in the back of my head like what's he gonna think and what are they gonna think and everything but anyway I just told him I said um it's a sort of my hero it's James Aspie he's a vegan activist and he's just a really cool guy and I got the chance to meet him yesterday and they said oh cool yeah he's like you know your tattoos are your tattoo artist is vegan and I was like what and so that was so cool because it was not what I was expecting of course and um so I just kind of ignored the couple at the end of, of the counter and I went back to get my tattoo, and as we started, um, you know, of course, my tattoo artist and I we were talking about him being vegan and me being vegan, and we were super excited and geeking out and everything. And a minute later, the couple, like, came walking over to me, and they said, um, it was so cute. They said, hey, um, could you tell us who that is, like, who's on your arm? Because we're vegetarian, and we're, we're thinking of going vegan. And they wanted to know James's name so that they could look him up and stuff like that. Blown away. Did not expect that to happen. And it's so cool because I've only been vegan for two years, but already it's exploding. It's so, so great. It's so, um, it's so different from how I was even two years ago. So I'm just, I'm really excited for 2018. They say it's the year of the vegan and I got to believe it. And, um, I'm just loving that people are opening up their eyes and seeing, um, that we don't need, we don't need the cruelty. We don't need it, you know? Like, I'm still chubby. I'm eating just fine, you know? <laughs> like, like, there's plenty of food. There's plenty of nutrition. Like, I don't get, I mean, even though I am chubby, obviously, um, I, you know, I hardly ever get sick. And when I do, it's like a fraction of how bad it used to be. And 
anyway, I love this lifestyle. There's a million reasons to love it, and it's the best thing I've ever done. So anyway, that's my story about my James Aspie tattoo, and thank you so much for clicking on this, and I appreciate it, and thanks again. Bye.